everybody. We're so excited today. We are here to talk about the Tony Awards. It's the highlight of the uh, show tunes, uh, Broadway uh, year for us that love that genre. And uh, it was really a fun night that we had last night. And I'm Rachel and my friend Hayden is here to talk about this with me. Hi. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> and we talked last year about the Tony Awards, and I'll put a link down if people want to listen to to that uh, podcast. And I really enjoyed doing that. I live in Utah. I uh, haven't had a chance to see a lot of these uh, a lot of these shows, and so I'm just going off of listening to the cast album, and mm -hmm. uh, and and then just the few little clips that you can find online. It's going to be fun to talk about it. Um, we don't we don't really cover the plays that much but one thing that really surprised me was how there was no no love at hardly at all for to kill a mockingbird mm -hmm. i was really expecting um, aside that to, from julia king and bolger yeah i was really expecting that to get a lot more just a lot more love because i just thought everybody loved you know aaron sorkin and it was sort of this big buzzy thing um, but yeah, except for that one award, it was not really talked about hardly at all, which was interesting. Right. That was, uh, and you know, all the plays looked pretty solid, pretty good. Yeah. To me, we're going to talk about one that I, uh, I'm curious to know where the line is between play and musical, but, uh, but yeah, they had James Corden as the host and the opening number was pretty fun. Do it live. That was pretty fun, I thought. Yeah. You like that? What did you think of him as yeah, a host? I, 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 um, I tend to go back and forth on him, on James Corden. I, I do, like, when I like him, I like him. But, like, when I don't, I'm, like, not, like, a huge fan. But mm -hmm. overall, I kind I quite, I thought he was pretty decent host, in my opinion, overall. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. overall, I thought he was fine. I don't know. I, I feel like he's the type of comic that thinks if you shout it, it's funnier, which I don't really agree with. But, uh, I don't know, he's just not my favorite. But I did like the opening number, and he had some some fun moments. I I didn't really like the let's make each other fight bit. That went on way too long. And just, I don't know, just wasn't funny to me. Yeah. Yeah, I was amused by it personally, but uh, it. it's subjective. Sure, sure. Um, and there was a tweet this morning that we were going to talk briefly about that the cast of the Be More Chill, that they were right. uh, upset because they did this whole uh, routine in this in the bathroom, which I didn't think was funny, um, with Sarah Bareilles and Josh Groban and uh to i guess the song uh is uh, it was a parody of michael in the bathroom which is from be more chill and they were a little bit salty that they didn't get a, there was no shout out to be more chill in the joke which yeah is valid yeah um well i think like the joke like mostly works if you're like familiar specifically with be more chill Mm -hmm. um like because i was pretty amused by it like since i like know the show like pretty decently mm -hmm. like um so like i like i was i knew what i it's like a very niche kind of joke i feel um so i knew i realized like when they didn't credit it oh not everybody is going to understand what this is from and especially when they didn't end up like crediting um be more chill with it so a lot of people were probably really confused <laughs> Yeah, I didn't mean um, it. It just seems a little tacky to not, if you're parodying, I don't know, a show like this, it seems like they should have just at least put it in the corner. Maybe like, yeah, hashtag be more chill or something. Yeah. I do know that, um, like, um, for parody, like, there, you do, like, technically the thing is, like, you don't need to get, like, permission for parody. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, um, I, I think, like, they should have given, but, like, definitely they should have given some form of credit um i think um i i don't know what was going on maybe 
I don't know if they have or will issue like some kind of apology, but they probably will at some point. Yeah, I, I, I see on uh, the Be More Chill Twitter yeah. that James Corden has come out said, and then also Josh Groban tweeted out uh, that uh, that that's where it was from. So yeah, it, it feels like it feels like a producer thing, I guess. In this case, mm-hmm. I I feel um, that that is why it didn't um, pan out uh, in giving them credit. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, but uh, the, so the night, uh, like I said, we had an opening, big opening number, which was pretty fun. And then we started out with the first of the musical uh, showcases uh, was Ain't Too Proud. And this uh, musical is about the Temptations. And uh, it has a show score of 83 uh, on the show score. And uh, the, they, did, uh, uh, they did Ain't Too Proud to Beg, Just My Imagination, and Can't Get Next to You in the song. And uh, what did you think of the performance? Um, I thought it was fine. It didn't really grab me. Um... I tend not to be like a major fan of the jukebox um, bio musicals personally. That's just mm-hmm. a personal tasting of mine, but like for what it was, I think it was fine. I, I hear the performances in the show, like, and from what I heard on the cast album, like are tend to be really good. So um thought it was uh, fine for what it was. I don't really have any strong opinions on the show, mm-hmm. um, but um, not my cup of tea, but uh, I think it's fine, personally. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. It has a huge cast, which, you know, could be interesting. They had a lot of, you know, because there's been 23 members of the Temptations over the history. And I think that's kind of interesting that they're including that, uh, that element of the band, uh, instead of just, you know, like a typical uh, musical uh, biopic was just about or uh, not biopic bio musical uh, is usually just about one person or a group of five, you know group of five or whatever um they had a lot of people on that stage by the end uh, yeah but i was not that impressed by the cast uh, recordings i thought it was pretty standard uh temptations songs that's fine uh it's it's probably not my favorite i think i prefer the jukebox musicals that are more like like moulin rouge or mamma mia where they take those songs and then they work it into a fictional story i think i like that better yeah i i agree with that Mm -hmm. yeah uh but uh the I, i have uh quotes from the new york times and the hollywood reporter for all of these they were both pretty positive on it the new york times said the fabulous standards have been reimagined with a heightened broadway flair that stops short of pandering this is especially true of the sinuous synchrosity of mr trulio's choreography in which everyone is often doing the same moves but with a subtle stylish edge that sets each member apart so there you go. Um, and then the Hollywood Reporter says, sure, there are craft issues with a show that's more narrated than dramatized. But as a fan experience, this high energy tribute delivers big time. So that's interesting. I, I yeah. thought that I wasn't that impressed with the performance. Uh, I, I particularly in just my imagination, I thought that it wasn't the guy's best day. I don't think he was a little pitchy yeah. about yeah, I feel like the show is just like a, it's like an easy night at the theater. It's like, um, just like a, like a night to like lay back if you just want to see a show and like don't really mm-hmm. want, like, if you don't like know anything about the shows and just want something like base kind of easy, you just uh, like to understand, you just uh, would see like, um, uh, ain't you proud to hear like uh, your favorite temptation song is i guess overall my take on the show yeah like going to a, a solid uh you know, cover band or something like that kind of with a little yeah <laughs> uh yeah so uh there you go ain't you proud uh so and there were a, there were a couple shows that 
didn't get into didn't get nominated you know that uh we had the go-go girls uh musical that didn't get and i forget what that head one. over heels head over heels that one i guess got pretty bad reviews but i, I then i think some people liked it but they didn't get yeah any. i i saw a big following uh for it um on my uh twitter feed so mm-hmm. um i think it's like a very like culty kind of show from what i've seen yeah and is be more chill is that for this next season or is it it just didn't it, get nominated it, was for this or? Season. it got one nomination this season oh one nomination okay yeah, it got then, um it got nominated for best score um it's been a it's a show that's like been in it was off broadway for a while and then it and it's like been going around for a while and they finally like released it to broadway it's like it's um like kind of like the next like it was like it's like the big internet show sort mm-hmm. of yeah so um, cool. it, it has a major following on the internet it's a, like a very big like high school oh. kind of show i have some personal issues with it but um but um i think it's an interesting show with some decent things about it yeah and we'll we'll talk about a couple other ones that didn't get much love but uh but yeah so there you go ain't you proud um and then we had uh we had tootsie and this is of course based on the movie from the 80s with dustin hoffman have you seen that movie yes i have i actually I, haven't I, seen I it do really, i i really like it i really like to see uh-huh. as a movie yeah i haven't seen it it's just one of those ones i haven't gotten around to seeing uh but there was some controversy with this show that i saw online at least uh, about some saying it's transphobic so it's not portraying a uh, a uh, trans character or a that it's kind of mocking those those that community some were upset about it how do you feel about that i keep going back and forth on it i feel i think they kind of dug themselves into a hole by like adapting kind of an admittedly outdated movie from the 80s where they had very different standards um at that point in time and I also think they kind of uh, realized that they were doing something that was based on like something that was pretty, um, again, outdated, like at that time and kind of tried to navigate through that by making, by like doing some more, like trying to bring in like a, apparently like a sort of the third wave, fem- wave feminism, like Me Too stuff, which I think kind of, it feels like it's that conflict with each other like they were trying to cover up their tracks there mm. um, um but um i feel it it did it's kind of a thoughtless show i don't think it's i don't want to like speak for any other community um personally mm. but um i can see the issues with it and i can fully understand um any issues with it um with that people might have with it so yeah again i go back and forth on uh, the show as a whole yeah i i still think that because awkwardness is inherently funny it's because one person feels a certain way doesn't necessarily mean it's not awkward for another person to feel that way and i don't think it means they're necessarily hateful or anything like that like i think it's a valid response for uh for a man to feel awkward in a dress like i don't think that that means they're transphobic it's just not who they are Mm -hmm. it's not their expression and uh and so obviously there's different ways to express it in a hateful way of course but i I, it's obviously a very tricky tricky thing and as I have not seen the play, I can't comment on how they handled that. But when I, I was kind of hoping that when I listened to it, that I'd be like, oh, this is so funny. This is so, this is so clever. Uh, people are just being too sensitive or whatever. But I listened to it and I was just like, eh. <laughs> I, 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 I think maybe the script is, is funny, or at least judging by these uh, The script won. So um, I, um, the book for the sh- 
for Tootsie won a uh, best book. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, um, probably. But just the songs I felt were pretty bland. Uh, they they didn't do a whole lot for me, and uh, I thought that this unstoppable number. There were things about it that I liked, but just as far as the actual lyrics and 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 music, I just thought it was a standard song. It didn't it didn't wow me. This song. Yeah, I I don't think it's my favorite song in the show. Um, I really like um, the stuff by uh, the female cast members actually um, mm-hmm. the most. Um, like Sarah Styles um, is, I love her Patter song um in the show and Mm -hmm. i gen generally find the songs in the show pretty catchy but unstoppable isn't really my favorite uh it got an 82 show score and i think santino uh, fontane is amazing and i he does a very fast dress change (laughs) and that was pretty impressive yeah Uh, and i i mean i love him i i've for like obviously he's you know he's the villain in frozen but he's got a great voice and i think he's super charming and uh so i, I really am a big fan i was happy that he won uh, and so you know that part of it i think was strong but i don't know it just seemed like a pretty bland forgettable song to me uh but and the the critics were very both of these critics were very high on it uh new york times says let me tell you instead what's right it's a musical and it's a comedy that might seem like a faint like faint praise but over the decades the genre that brought us guys and dolls has withered into a a, a damp tangled of wan jokes floating in a slick of ditties <laughs> comedy rarely flows as smoothly as it does here the secret is more than the book it's the songs mr yazbek is one of the few composer lyricists working today who can set jokes to music and make them pay oh so, there you go and then holly reporter says it has been reimagined a subversive comedy about gender roles specially specifically tailored for our times and no don't roll your eyes and wince about another gem from a less enlightened decades sacrificing its luster to anxious pc tampering this is a savvy up- update that manages to combine awareness of the evolution in gender politics with uh, in insouciant wit a playful spirit and an invigorating streak of good-natured vulgarity so there you go so they both really thought it was funny so yeah uh all right then we got oklahoma and this has a pretty low uh this and beetle just have the lowest of the uh show scores but i was surprised given all the praise this has a 79 show score <laughs> that was that much lower but still uh from all the praise that it was getting i was surprised it wasn't really high uh, but i guess it takes some risks so it's not going to please everybody um it it, it i think it, it reimagines the show overall and i think some of the traditionalists were yeah a little upset about it um is i think what happened there but mm-hmm. um yeah. Uh, yeah so they sang i can't say no and then oklahoma so ali stroker did i can't say no and uh, she's the first uh person in a wheelchair to win a tony award is that correct yeah that's i correct. read that um and so yeah here's my thing i guess about this i maybe am a traditionalist but i just I just felt like, I guess for me, I think that uh, that some shows are, you can take it, a scene out and you're just immediately in love with it. You know what I mean? And then other shows, mm-hmm. you have to see the whole thing kind of together to really catch the vision. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking that might be the case with this because to me, just watching it like sure i think that's really great that she won and she's a a mate that's amazing but to me (laughs) i felt like they were just kind of standing around like i was disappointed there wasn't some choreography and some i don't know just something happening to me it was just like is this just a concert like what's what's going on here and that's what was frustrating to me uh that uh 
felt like it could have had some a ener- little bit more energy to it. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um, I think like uh, knowing the show is like what they they like basically just um, what they've done is like they've um, acknowledged sort of the show's like initial problems and sort of just um, mix, mixed with it like and just like they um, left the script um, basically entirely intact and uh, took a different interpretation on it and um, acknowledged that how the show treats Judd is not exactly great, mm-hmm. um, um, which I really like because um, that was always one of my biggest problems with the show is that it's like how horribly they treat him throughout and like, like they, and like sing a song like about how they like hope he dies and now nobody will miss him, which is like a pretty horrible thing for right, your hero to yeah. sing about. And um, the show kind of acts like, oh, Oklahoma and this time was so great. And the show just like kind of takes like an entire, like they just knock that barrier down and just like, like really examine um, the implications of the show. Um, and what I feel is like a really like cool nuanced way. Um, and it's in a circle in the square, which is a great, really, I love that theater. It's very, um, it's a very intimate, um, and uh, like a smaller uh, theater in the round um, um, locale. And um, and I just like, I think I really like the intimacy that that theater brings. And I think they do a really good job with that like production. Mm-hmm. Um, also, um, I have a friend who's in the ensemble um, mm-hmm. of that. So I, I got to see her briefly. That was really cool. That is cool. Yeah. <clears throat> it's i'd be interested to see it uh but uh i i just i, I, I have to say i was I'm under not like a major i have to say like i'm not a major fan of oklahoma as a show i appreciate it um for all it's done but like this is the first time like watch like knowing about this production is like the first time i've been like wow i actually want to see a production of oklahoma yeah um for me um i did read too that it's uh, it's kind of laid back and they yeah. even i guess they're in certain scenes they're making chili that they actually serve they you can actually get some during the break or whatever mm-hmm. which is kind of funny yeah never heard of that before uh but uh yeah i think it might be just one of those you have to see uh yeah in, in the I, I do love theater in the round that's my preferred way yeah. to see theater, is theater yeah in the round. Yeah, but yeah i saw um i saw both uh spelling bee and fun home at that theater and um i had i really loved that location a yeah, lot I, so i actually saw spelling bee there as well uh, back in 2006 mm-hmm. in a in theater of the round so that was fun uh but anyway new york times says uh this latest incarnation goes much further in digging to a core of fraught ambivalence to do so it strips oklahoma down to its skewies uh or yeah skewies uh, discarding the picturesque costumes and swirling orchestrations and revealing a very human body that belongs to our conflicted present as much as it did to 1943 or to 1906 that was pretty interesting and then holly reporter says without altering the existing text fish and his excellent 12 member ensemble shine a new light on this corn-fed tale of two romantic uh two rom- oh, sorry and this corn-fed tale of two romantic triangles one played for drama the other for laughs what's significantly different is that a show normally interpreted as a celebration of the american spirit here unearths the darkness beneath the sunny surface the blood in the soil of the heartland and the fear-based hostility towards outsiders that continues to fester today so yeah so it's it's interesting i mean from my perspective i thought that kiss me kate was a lot more impressive but uh but obviously less risky so i guess it's just what you're looking for but so beetlejuice was next and this has the lowest show score of the nominated uh musicals at 76 and Mm -hmm. They did uh, Deo 
and uh, the whole being dead thing, the songs yeah. that they did. And uh, I, 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 I was not impressed with the cast recording at all. I just, it's just not the kind of thing that I would want to listen to. I, it was just not pleasant at all. And I just thought it sounded kind of awful, but, <laughs> but I, I, I did prefer it with the staging when you saw the, and I knew I would, but when you saw the, all the artistry going in, going into it, but I know that that guy says that he's doing everything in a medically healthy way, but that his voice sounds, it just, it sounds so alarming. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know. I just felt like I, it's not necessarily supposed to sound pleasant, but I don't know. It's just kind of, it's just not my favorite choice they could have made. It just sounds so harsh on his voice that it's sort of jarring and maybe that's what they're going for but i don't know i didn't love it uh but i feel like i feel like this show would be more impressive if we hadn't had just barely something like adam's family or young frankenstein or i feel like we've had a number of these kind of shows and it doesn't feel as like shocking or as original as i think it would have felt what do you think so I go like way back with Beetlejuice <laughs> as a movie. Uh-huh. Um, like I watched it like a billion times as when I was like six and seven, eight, I watched it so much. So it's like a really like um, formative movie for me. And it informed, informed a lot of like my overall, like, I guess, aesthetic. So I think this, I think the musical is, is like kind of, my sort of thing um i realize it's a bit of a hot mess but Mm -hmm. um i also like just kind of enjoy it like just because of because just i really love the movie so um and i also uh do really like alex brightman as a performer and uh and um, also sophia and caruso um as lydia is great um she's only 17. Mm -hmm. I love her. She's How great. do you feel about that voice, though, that he's doing? Like, do you? I does it make you uncomfortable? It's fine for me. Um, it, it I'm kind of just used to it. Um, I feel. Um, I I I'm just kind of used to the movie, so like I expect Beetlejuice to talk like that. Um, and like um, um, from what it looks like, um, he seems to be taking like all the proper care. Um, so um um let's hope mm-hmm. um he actually is let's hope so it um, kind of reminded me of uh adam pascal in in rent the way he was singing in that show and i know that really did affect his uh his voice for the long term i mean he still has done some shows since but i know it definitely did impact his his voice so hopefully that won't be the case with him but yeah i don't know it was just makes it kind of unpleasant to listen to for me but yeah, he's taking a, he's taking a break today so oh, there's good. that um good. uh yeah new york times uh says though it features a jaw-droppingly well-appointed gothic funhouse set uh replete with spooky surprises the show so overstuffs itself with gags one-liners and visual diversions that you shut down from sensory overlord overload so there you go. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter was more positive on it. He says, while the poppy score is uneven and the second act becomes overly convoluted, uh, tripping up on its own plot contortions, the spectacular production values and rapid fire jokes deliver plenty of rambunctious entertainment. Some will no doubt find the show's vor- voracious appetite for eccentric excess tiresome, but others will eagerly get on board with its demented extravagance. So there you go. <laughs> these these theater critics are <laughs> they like their adjectives <laughs> but uh so then we had the prom coming up next and the prom was my second favorite of all of the cast recordings that i listened to i thought it was really charming and had really good singers and it has an 84 uh show score and they did tonight belongs to you and I really loved the choreography 
and this just, it was just so energetic and really fun and I, I it was just after a couple of different routines that hadn't had that kind of choreography I, I just really enjoyed it and it kind of felt like old school fun uh Broadway to me yeah um yeah I really liked it too um it's a very wholesome nice uh, show um and it, it just has a really nice message the, and the performers were great i wish they utilized their best level more but uh um besides That's that true. Uh, yeah i love um, that level besides that, yeah she's amazing um but um overall um, it was really nice it was really fun and peppy mm-hmm. yeah i really liked it like I said, it was my second favorite of the of the soundtracks that I of the cast recordings that I listened to. It says the prom is such a joyful hoot with its kinetic dancing, broad mugging, and belty anthems. It makes you believe in musical comedy again these these days. That takes some doing. And then Holly Reporter says the show is one part satire packed with delicious theatrical in jokes delivered with a plum by game stage veterans playing caricatures of themselves and one part inclusivity teaching moments reminding us there's a place for everyone beneath the mylar balloons at a high school dance even in conservative Indiana. If the two halves aren't entirely seamless, especially in the uneven second act, the show has enough humor and heart to paper over the cracks. So, yeah, I think it looks like a really sweet, fun show. And it it does sound like it does get kind of meta. Yeah. With the, with the, the, the uh, veteran actors wanting to kind of help her. Uh, that that's, yeah that's kind of fun and also like very tongue-in-cheek um about like uh, them like really wanting to be relevant again by talking about like a very like hot button issue mm-hmm. um like it's not like very it's it's very it's very tongue-in-cheek and it doesn't like play it entirely straight which is always amusing yeah it's like the drowsy chaperone meets mean girls <laughs> or something yeah and it's yeah. by uh, the book writer of drowsy chaperone so oh oh really i didn't realize yeah. that. well that's yeah. fun because uh, yeah i i love the drowsy chaperone i actually got to see that back yeah. in 2006 i saw it in the pre yeah. showings before it was even officially because i got so i got mm. a really good deal which was exciting um okay yeah. So then we had Choir Boy, which can you explain to me what is the difference between a play that has songs and a musical? I Why think is this not a musical? Um, right. Um, I believe it like uh, generally like started out specifically as a play and um, that um, and I don't like think like it's I, from what I know, I don't think that the, the, like, uh, sequences are throughout the show. Like, I don't think it's, uh, like, specifically, like, um, I think it's, um, what's the word? I think it's, uh, mostly just kind of, they feature enough, um, to be notable, but, like, it's not throughout the whole show, and most of it is, I guess, like, talked through um okay so there isn't like a rule sorry i don't think there's like a rule it's like a i think it's like a fine line because i was actually wondering a while ago um when uh peter and the star catcher um came out um that has a lot of musical numbers in it but it was classified for play so i was wondering about that too so um this was years ago um so so um um, I guess uh, like the Tonys like classify it as a play, so um, because I guess I don't think it has enough uh, like music specifically mm-hmm. um, to uh, classify it as such. Interesting. I yeah, I I, I remember that now that you mentioned about Peter because like oh I thought that was a, a musical, but then it was best play. Uh, but yeah, they yeah. did Rock in Jerusalem. And I really enjoyed it. I it was a fun. Yeah. I hadn't, I didn't know about this uh, uh, 
that this had music going into it so i hadn't listened to the album i had no uh no ex- i knew nothing about it so that was kind of fun to get this surprise and it was basically acapella with this uh they did the step dancing which i really like and i i don't know i just thought i thought it was really good i, I love that kind of uh spirituals uh, songs done like that and so i thought it was very impressive yeah yeah one of the highlights yeah, of I the agree. night for me uh yeah they it has an 84 uh, show score and uh, New York Times says, by the time Jeremy Pope making a sensational Broadway debut in the role gets through with him, that sketch has been filled in, roughed up, and turned inside out. And with it, a world of tired ideas about what it means for a man to be strong. Uh, when Choir Boy sticks to that idea, uh, focusing on uh, Ferris's discovery through exuberant music of the brawn inside his perceived weakness, it is captivating and fresh. The portrait of his adversaries, Coral and otherwise, is less so. So it sounds like especially that lead character is, uh, his story is really well done. Some of the side characters maybe not yeah. as well. Uh, so, and, and then... Um, you'd expect that uh, from uh, the uh, writer of Moonlight, so... Mm. Um, yeah. He wrote the play, uh, oh, so... Oh, that's interesting. He, the writer of Moonlight uh, also wrote this, so... Oh. I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the Hollywood Reporter says, the distended length points up some ambling stretches in which the play's thrust loses force. Fortunately, the frequent detours into song can be relied upon to keep recapturing the emotional intensity, revealing the painful aloneness of Ferris and some of his classmates, as well as the solace and hope that music provides them. So. It's like the music is really one of the big strengths in this lead character. So oh, it sounds really interesting. I wonder if they're going to make a movie about it. It could be good. Yeah. Okay. Then we got uh, Hades Town. And yeah. this a 91, of course, the highest show score that you could have. And what's interesting about this, as I was looking into it, is that uh, it had quite a road to get yep to the tonys and they did a uh a road to hell if you will yeah (laughs) and they did a uh a preview or whatever in i I don't know if it's off broadway but the guy at new york times was saying he had seen it uh i think last year and it he didn't like it at all and then they went back and retooled it and i mean i think it was quite the the process and so he was very in his review he was very surprised how much he liked it and so you know that's kind of interesting how the how these the road to to getting here like we were talking about you know that uh, every overnight sensation is 10 years in the making i think that's probably true for this musical as well right yeah, yeah. um uh so do we just start gushing about the yeah. show now or what <laughs> Yeah, this, I mean, I'm listening to all these uh, cast recordings. Most of them, I just wasn't capturing capturing the vision. And then this one, I was just, I immediately texted you. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. And I, I, I loved every song. It was just so energetic and fresh and new, but it just had such good hooks every song. They really, you know, Drew, I can't remember res- responding so positively to a Broadway musical. Honestly, I can't even think of since Cast Cast since uh, since Hamilton. Uh, it, it was great. I loved it, <laughs> and I I found out that I was actually listening first time was listening to the to the live recording, uh, which right. I off Broadway, but it was amazing. Yeah. And then I listened to the right one, and it was also amazing. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. It was great yeah yeah it's uh it's 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 amazing and i love it and uh i can't wait to someday see it words words like just words i can't (laughs) i can't describe i just love this so much yeah 
And the performance just straight up made me like start crying. It was just very emotional. And I was getting like chills and I was just like, I, I was just like, in love. I was, yeah. I was just like mess. Yeah. Like every song really draws you in and is just, I don't know. It just manages to find that balance of being like really new, really fresh, but also like really singable, really fun. And, uh, uh, and so I can't wait. And then I loved just watching the, the, all the staging and the artistry and the choreography and the, it was just yeah odd. also yeah something that's worth mentioning too is um they actually uh utilized i believe um like all of the cast and like the understudies for the tony's performance um like despite like them not like doing it in the normal show so they would like uh be seen on the tony stage and uh, have that opportunity i believe beetlejuice also did this uh with their cast which oh. is a really cool thing for them yeah. to do that is cool. um yeah uh, um but it, yeah but, light just swinging and i was just chill yeah it was so good and uh you had mentioned when we were talking that they i guess had a mostly or all a uh, female production team uh, yeah it was the only um the uh rachel chapkin who won best direction of musical um uh brought up that she was that like she shouldn't like be the only uh, female director of a musical in like a season and uh, yeah. that there should be more of them uh more of that uh so and she was completely right and i was happy she won um because i i'm still a little annoyed that she didn't win uh, for a great comet two years ago but mm -hmm. uh i guess this makes up for that kind of <laughs> yeah in my eyes um but uh finally but yeah it has a, a like um a female um songwriter um yeah um, yeah, yeah speech was um, good too. i liked uh the i think it was a songwriter that won for hagestown female yeah, yeah yeah she she started it out as a concept album in the 2010 crazy um that's amazing and that like built on into a musical and it's been all over it's been in uh canada london the show um yeah it, and before like finally making it to Broadway, it's gone like through a big journey. Yeah, that's that. That always amazes me. Like they must have times so that are just like I never want to hear that music ever again. I never want it. Like I'm so, I don't know. Just yeah, best the, scenic design and uh, best sound design. Um, yeah. uh, both uh, had uh, women on that those teams as well for the show. So mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah. thought it was on a whole nother level than anything else. It was just yeah. So it, it, great. it was the obvious winner. Like, yeah. Like you just like, no, it's, 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 it's going, it's going, it should go to East town. I was just, it like, it was the very obvious. Yeah. Best musical of the lot. Yeah. It would have been just wrong. <laughs> if anything else had won. I, was, I have no, I, I honestly don't have anything specifically against the other shows. Yeah. As a whole, I, I wouldn't have been angry if anything else, one because i don't i genuinely do not have anything against them but like come on yeah. it, it, it just come on you, you kind of have to yeah and i i also i mean i like i love the fact that you have this female talent but they all it's not just a token win like it, they yeah. all nailed it they all did an amazing job yeah. so they deserve it yeah <laughs> which is makes yeah. it better so <laughs> uh yeah so new york times says uh miss Chav chapkin uh, has probably come as close as anyone could to selling a cerebral downtown story as state-of-the-art broadway entertainment like the sets and musical arrangements the costumes the lighting and the sound design are as good as it gets so i agree <laughs> i have even seen it all and i agree <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Holly Reporter says a seamless theatrical experience. This beguiling, virtually sung through musical is notable for the ex expressive beauty of its score, the dark imagination of its stage pictures, and the clarity of its storytelling. Performed by a first rate cast and played with spirited feeling by seven on stage musicians, it, it arrives on Broadway with a furnace like blast of creativity. So yeah, that's an, what do you think of that trend on Broadway? I mean, I guess it's, it's been for quite a while, 
but the whole idea of the actors playing the instruments kind of thing on stage how do you yeah do you i mean i i i think it's interesting um i don't really have any like i can't i can't like complain i don't really complain about it or anything i think it's an interesting choice uh to do it um like and if it works and it works mm -hmm. i guess yeah. um not really complicated <laughs> um it's uh just it, if it works it works that's that's yeah. That's my view. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, um, the first time I ever saw that was with John Doyle with Sweeney Todd. I'm sure it was done right. other times, but that was the first time I'd ever seen. And him yeah. in, in his version of Company, uh, both of those, I think it's really cool. It works quite well. Uh, so anyway, then we had Kiss Me Kate. And this was kind of weird. Like, why did Kelly O'Hare not sing? Is she on vocal rest or something? Um, I don't know, actually. Um, it was kind of odd. Um, no idea, honestly. <laughs> uh, that was just a little disappointing, I'm not going to lie. But uh, uh, it has a show score of 84. Seems to be the popular score yeah. <laughs> the night. <laughs> but um, Kiss Me Kate uh then it's uh too darn hot is the one they did and it was pretty much just a a dancing scene right which i love it was amazing and uh i i thought it was great i really enjoyed it i just would have liked to have heard kelly because i love her so much she's amazing right and you know yeah. she's she's done amazing things with uh with revivals lately uh you know she was in the king and i she was in south pacific she's in this i'm sure there's others uh that she was in and so i don't know i was just i, re I would really be curious if any if anyone knows why kelly didn't sing <laughs> uh but i've heard the only thing i've heard about the show that was negative is that uh that the chemistry is not quite there between the two leads i don't know but um you couldn't tell because she wasn't in, in the number uh but you know it's great i love maybe that's kate. why maybe that's why they didn't do that number. <laughs> maybe maybe i love kiss me kate i think it's really funny and i i like you know so many great cole porter songs so i definitely if i was in new york i would try to go see this yeah for sure yeah um, um my thought is it's kiss me kate so mm -hmm. i mean if it's like i don't really have any strong opinions i guess so i'm just like um kiss me kate back <laughs> the dancing was pretty doing good that again. do you think yeah i mean yeah. i think it's a perfectly like great like well choreographed well um energized number it's just uh i guess it's just kind of a i don't want to say like i've been there done that but like, I mean, I wasn't, like, really, like, surprised uh, by it, personally, mm -hmm. um, just because I think I'm, I've been, like, exposed to sort of shows like that before. But uh, for mm -hmm. what it was, it was a very, very nice, uh, well-choreographed, mm -hmm. uh, well-executed number. And that's at Lincoln Center, right? Or was? At, at uh, Studio 54. Oh, Studio 54. Okay. I was thinking this. Uh, okay. Then the New York Times says, turns out the author's take on marriage is more complex and insightful than we may recall. And where they did wander into material now rightly seen as toxic, a few changes in emphasis and one major revision allow us to enjoy it uh, in a new light as, to, as a two-way taming distorted not by malice, but through the mocking filter of farce pretty well written review there uh and then how reporter says the show is very essence of giddy post-war light and in, in in entertainment even in an imperfectly cast revival like the new roundabout production it's virtually impossible not to surrender to its boisterous charms so there you go all right then we got <laughs> a performance from the share show and they did believe and i did not yeah. like it at all it didn't work for me at all i thought it felt like 
you know on cruises they have those uh celebrity uh imitator concert yeah. things <laughs> that's right. what it felt like to me i was just like what i i was shocked that she won i don't know there must be something i was missing because i i just i didn't like it at all it was not for me i thought that i don't know I, the costumes were impressive but they won for costumes so yeah yeah um, they were impressive but i don't know i just i didn't like it it wasn't for me yeah i wasn't i'm not a big fan of it um i haven't seen the whole thing but uh um and i love stephanie j block i wish she i'm really happy she won i just wish it wasn't for this yeah Oh, no. um, because I, she really should have won for falsettos um, back when that came out, um, and she was nominated for that much better performance. This was—I feel it was kind of a—I feel it was kind of a well. We we probably should have given this to you like years ago, but um, wow. here career award. It, it was it was like it was it was a like a career award yeah. basically. Speaking of career wars, it was kind of fun that Elaine May won for her play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. yeah. Uh, but yeah, the 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 critics are actually pretty nice to this. It has an eighty one show score, so that's pretty pretty decent. Um, and uh, it says share in the straight jacket of the biographical jukebox musical, particularly the uh, tri- tripper tight diva sub subgenus most recently botched by summer the donner summer musical we need not rehearse the traps inherent in the genre except to say that the share show falls into all of them it wastes so much time hammering its biographical bullet points and tune stack into place despite logic or chronology that it never seems to notice the unintelligible result so actually that was not nice at all um and then uh but the Hollywood reporter was i think he says he's more mixed on it i think he says is the show good certainly not in the sense of traditional musical theater craft would i see it again duh already planning on it <laughs> director jason moore's production which breaks new frontiers on broadway for bare midriffs under boobs wigs and uh pile, pile pile let it i don't know what that unashamedly embraces its abundance of trashy flashy tacky vintage vegas quiche but it's also uh styly fabulous and imbued with a plucky feminist spirit so there you go i guess yeah that's 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 kitsch that's that's kitsch not quiche uh vegas kitsch oh okay um it, it basically means camp yeah um so it sounds like it's kind of maybe a guilty pleasure yeah it, it's a definitely feeling. a cult kind of it's definitely a cult like kind of show i've seen like a lot of following for it um i i don't think i would like personally see it but uh it, it's definitely for some people not yeah. for me personally there you go uh then the and only other this way- is someone who loves there yeah <laughs> and i say this is someone who actually really likes chair yeah yeah so the only other we didn't see a song but we got a little clip from the of the king kong puppet and so this show i guess ended up being our kind of a disaster uh i guess it's it's still showing like so it hasn't been hasn't closed that fast but it, it has a 69 show score so very low um despite this amazing puppet that i think did win an award for yeah, the puppet. it won a special award for the puppet. Yeah. yeah. I, it's too bad because I actually enjoyed uh, it on uh, the Macy's uh, Parade. They did one song, they had one song from there, and I thought it was nice. Uh, but, you know, you can only tell so much from one song. Uh, but, yeah, everybody seems to be really down on it. Uh, they, they had a great review, though, uh, from uh, the New York Times where they sent two critics and it was like it was written as if it was a conversation between the two critics it was very clever uh and uh, the the one says uh they he called it it was spirit crushing and then the other says the one word i would describe the one word i use to describe my response can't be printed here (laughs) 
So he says, so I guess I will go with, ugh. That's what he said. That was pretty funny. And then the Hollywood Reporter says, that monstrous ape able to cup an aspiring Hollywood starlet in one giant paw pretty much is the show in this otherwise blundering musical in which a low wattage cast gamely trudges through one embarrassing number or cliche ridden book scene after another. Yikes. Have you heard anything about this? <laughs> yeah. Um, it doesn't sound great. <laughs> um, yeah. I, um, it's a King Kong musical. Um, but that puppet is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's uh, someone um, on a podcast uh, had um, basically, they're probably on a, um, uh, on um it's a uh, uh jim and tomic's uh, musical theater happy hour um which i guess i'm plugging for no good reason um i mean they're great but they're great so whatever um they said uh one of them uh said um i think this is a musical destined uh uh to be at like universal studios where they'll like cut it down to 30 minutes just to like and just like show off the puppet um, yeah. It, it, yeah so i guess that's uh gonna be it <laughs> they it's longevity they probably <laughs> a universal studio show yeah they probably got too preoccupied and this happens sometimes with movies that they'll become too kind of focused on the special effects and forget to work as much on the script it seems like at least so it sounds like that's maybe what happened here but you know you can't all be winners what are you gonna do so yeah there you go so that was the show and uh and you had suggested that we talk about some of the stuff coming up which is exciting so i like that idea yeah um yeah actually uh one more thing uh first uh speaking about disasters and whatnot um i i find it funny that um for hades town um they it's a re uh, it's a reunion of um both uh reeve carney and patrick page after uh, they were in a uh, spider-man turn off the dark mm. um together which was a notorious disaster yeah of a show um so this is their redemption arc i guess uh so peter parker in green goblin redemption arc <laughs> oh that's cool yeah yeah that is interesting um, all right, so uh, they have in this article from Playbill where they're talking about uh, the shows coming. Uh, they have some that are for sure, and then others that are uh, that look hopeful or that to watch out for. Um, so they have Moulin Rouge coming for sure. Uh, it's opening uh, July twenty fifth. Uh, so uh, the uh, adaptation of the Baz Luhrmann. A movie uh with all the featuring the songs from the original film as well as more recent pop hits uh, i guess it, it had already been in boston uh different things that's coming to broadway uh how do you feel about moulin rouge coming to broadway um my stance on the original moulin rouge is i appreciate it as a film um i think it's a little i don't think the movie specifically is for me i appreciate all the artistry that goes into it um and i think it but um i feel the movie is a little too frenetic for me personally um so i respect it but um i'm interested in seeing uh how it it goes on on to the stage um and i'm interested in a uh, i'm honestly interested in seeing uh how it works um with that energy on the stage um in a live theater so yeah i so, yeah I, uh, I i like the movie fine it's uh i don't know i guess i have mixed feelings on the on the on the characters and story but the musical numbers yeah. are incredible and the artistry is really great and i'm frankly kind of surprised it took them this long uh to <laughs> to bring to broadway well, it seems so perfect about as long as uh, it takes uh baz Luhrmann to edit his movie so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean they probably had a bit of a fight getting all the um yeah that all I the can, songs yeah that sounds that sounds right mm -hmm. honestly they 
there are a lot of new songs in the show too um like they have like uh i know they have like royal by lord um um trying to remember some of the other ones um uh chandelier by sia um there's a lot mm-hmm. of them uh like a lot of like um single ladies um uh firework um oh yeah, I'm um, rolling in the deep, um, bad romance. So there's like a um, toxic a lot of songs. Uh, then there's a lot of new songs too um, that they threw in there as well. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's like a lot. Like if you go into the Wikipedia page, it's like because it already like, had a, a lot of songs. It already has a lot. They just like there are a lot more now too. That's interesting. Uh, then we have Tina the tina turner musical coming uh, i are they ever i think are they ever gonna run out of people <laughs> just make musicals on? i i don't know no this, um <laughs> i mean if exciting. you go down uh there's also the britney spears and uh uh alanis morissette uh yeah uh, musicals <laughs> um yeah. although i think those are both uh those aren't bio bio music oh right i think okay. they're yeah uh, which I like, right I prefer better. But yeah, uh, uh, this, I don't know. Oh, there's, a Michael, sound that... there's a Michael Jackson one coming out. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's okay. going to be, and apparently um, they're trying to figure out how to do it now. Um, so I'm wondering how that's going to turn out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm not that excited about Tina Turner. I'd be a jagged little pill. Uh, taking the last more set songs, and I feel like this one I've heard about it for a long time. Now finally, yeah. it's going to Broadway, so hopefully it'll hopefully it'll be good. We'll see. Uh, yeah. The book is by Diablo Cody. That definitely perks yeah. my interest because I love her. Yeah, I really like her work too. Um, and then we have, uh, yeah, "Don't Stop Till You Get Enough," Michael Jackson. That's risky. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was in development uh, like way before. Um, I think it was in development a little bit before, so now that's going to be awkward. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I and this one is actually about him. It's not a... Yeah, exactly. So that's... Which is... Well, they're going to... Well, let's... let's see if they work this out yeah man i i mean if i was an investor i would be very hesitant that's for sure I'll tell I you that be, right now because um i know uh technical ITT pulled out of uh, doing a movie about uh bubbles the monkey mm-hmm. um, recently yeah um so this is just oof yeah and then there's a magic mike musical that i guess has gone through yeah. shakeups and uh, so they were going to premiere in Boston, and now, so we don't know if that's going to happen. But there's that. Uh, there's Once Upon a uh, One More Time. That's the uh, Britney Spears one that yeah uh, opened in Chicago, I think. Uh, so yeah, that could be interesting. Is uh, Born for This a Broadway bound bio musical about the life of BB Williams? Uh, it, I guess it premiered in Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, and it has the uh, book book written by Charles Randolph Wright and uh, his Grammy winner. Anyway, musical chronicles uh, uh, Winans' struggles between family, faith, and fame. And so I don't know that I don't know that singer that well or at all. <laughs> so, uh, but then there's also a, a adaptation of Some Like It Hot. Uh, yeah it could be coming uh, so yeah. uh, i i do love that movie so um it, yeah score by mark shaman and scott whitman from hairspray and and Smash. also um also the late craig uh Zaydan, who um passed away um recently mm-hmm. um with uh um so uh he's also working on it and I guess there's, uh, yeah, so there's a couple revivals in the works. Uh, Titanic uh, is being revived, the uh, which 
it's a fine musical. It didn't, it felt like it was pretty forgettable, but I, who knows? I don't, I honestly don't know much about it. Other I've than seen it once Titanic. before. I, yeah, um, they're reviving uh, West Side Story also um, by Ivo Van Hove, mm-hmm. um, which should be really interesting. Um, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is getting a revival with uh, Laurie Metcalf and yeah. Eddie Izzard. So That'll be I, really I'm looking good. forward to that would be that should be great um mm-hmm. and I, I love um Lord Metcalf. yeah i love her too and the secret garden which is yeah, i think I a very underrated garden. musical i love it's so it's, songs. yeah it's a super underrated show mm-hmm. um uh, oh and glenn gary glenn ross um is uh having um uh, is uh going to um have a an all-female cast uh interpretation of it so oh um, which which um, sounds pretty interesting. I'm not a big fan of the original, so um, um, but um, yeah, um, I, I I'm interested in seeing how that turns out. Yeah, and then there's a girl from the North Country, which Bob Dylan songs. That's a possibility, and then Lempika, which is uh, the uh, next, I guess, Rachel Chavkin vehicle that could come. Yeah. Uh, Devil Wars Prada, I guess it has a score yeah. by Elton John, uh, and so that's interesting. Uh, yeah, that uh, that could be there. Also, a revival of Dream Girls is possible. I guess yeah, it was which big was already in, in that was in London. Yeah, it was uh, in London when I was there. Oh, um, I didn't end up seeing it, but uh, I know a lot of people who did. Who said it was a very good production. Hmm. Yeah, there's a musical based on the movie The Visitor. Uh, and evidently David Ide Pierce and Ariel Stachel is are are gonna be in it if it comes. And then uh Caroline or Change, which is let's see here, focuses on a, a revival. Main... Oh, it's a revival. It's a musical revival. Um it came out um in two thousand four, um, the original musical. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, it's for folks on a maid working in a sweltering basement in the Gelman household in 1963, Louisiana. So that's interesting. And uh, then there's this show six about the ill-fated wives of Henry VIII. And I've heard very mixed reviews. I, yeah, this. I, I I hear a lot of people talking about it and I still don't exactly know what the opinion is that they have mm-hmm. um on it so um i'm kind of i guess i'm fascinated on learning more about what makes it so yeah yeah it's, yeah there's a lot on youtube about it and stuff like that but um and then chasing rainbows which is about judy garland and that does not excite me i don't know i just Maybe I'm just really down on that trailer with Renee Zellweger for the movie that I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> but uh, I, we'll see. But I don't know, Judy Apparently Garland. Apparently, this is just, her early career. So her voice um, is just so one of a kind. It's so unique to me that I, I, I'll have to see it to believe it that it's good. Hopefully, it will be. Yeah um but uh, then they have company which is really interesting because they've yeah. gender swapped it so bobby is uh played by patty lapone which i think it could be really interesting um she's um um uh she's uh not a uh, patty lapone isn't bobby she's a uh, um uh what's her name uh and uh oh, she's the lady lunch. lunch oh why was yeah. thinking i heard that it was gender swapped no, it is gender swapped, but she's uh, not. It's not entirely gender swapped. Um, it's uh, they they um, gender swap some of the characters. Some of the characters are um, the same. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, that could be uh, really cool. I, it, it's getting a lot of acclaim in London, and the cast album for the London version is out. Um, Want to check that out? Um, that's a really good. That's a really cool production. Um, it's in London right now um very it's very it's really cool actually um 
So yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and the last album. one out now. If you want to check it out. Cool. The last one is Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, we have a uh, the four-time Tony winner Jerry Zaks, most recently presented on Broadway uh, with Hello Dolly, will direct the Broadway-bound musical Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, so, uh, and I didn't even know that that was based on a a, a, a novel. And the the, yeah. the movie was based on a novel. Who knew? But yeah. uh, but it's the I, same people who did something rotten musical yeah so right there you go so yeah. lots to look forward to in the world of theater so it's kind of fun yeah so there you go that is the tony award so let us know what you guys thought about the show last night of the different were you happy with the winner uh and uh and what did you think of the different performances we'd love to hear are you happy with the winner or are you completely wrong <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> let us know in the comment section that would be really fun and uh thanks so much for coming on talking about this i really appreciate it yeah yeah no problem um <laughs> so how can people yeah, follow you uh, on social media and all that fun stuff um, you can find me on Twitter at the Hayden Wilder, um, and on uh, Instagram at just uh, Hayden Wilder if you like. Great, and you can find me at Rachel's Reviews all over social media and on iTunes and YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, you can give us your ratings and reviews. Really appreciate it. If you're listening on YouTube, if you can give us thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate that as well. And uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, and if you're interested in uh, in supporting the channel, we also have our Patreon uh, that's a lot of fun. And you can get into our secret Facebook group uh, with just $5 a month. So check that out. And uh, thanks so much, Hayden. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll have to yeah. meet again next year. Ooh. Okay. Bye.